The UAW strike expanded last week with workers at 38 Stellantis and GM supply plants walking off the job. That has led to concerns of an auto part shortage for dealerships and mechanics. Joining us now is Patrick Olson, editor in chief of Carfax, to dive into this issue. Thanks so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Rochelle, for having me. Uh, first, we want to ask, is an auto parts shortage a real fear? And if you think so, when will dealerships and mechanics start to feel that pinch? Well, interestingly enough, there's been a kind of a parts shortage already in the auto industry that is a, um, a hangover, if you will, from the COVID days where supply chains were interrupted. And so some replacement parts I know have taken extra weeks or even months to be found. So the problem here is the longer the strike goes on, the more that that shortage could be amplified. Now, sometimes we are fortunate that we can kind of anticipate a repair. Maybe we, we hear something, we're putting it off. We know we need to do something in the near future. For those people who are anticipating a repair, what should they do? Well, I'd be proactive, right? So I'd start with my nearest mechanic that I trust and talk to them now and say, do you have these parts in and let's set a time. And if they don't have it, then I would just keep widening out my circle of shops until I found somebody who has the parts. Uh, very often, the bigger uh, service shops tend to have more parts on hand, uh, but you never know. The, your local guy might also have it. But I would definitely get planning early and often and try to set up those appointments as soon as you can. Does using aftermarket parts at all impact warranties? Well, it's interesting. It's a two-way street. There's a federal act that says that um, automakers have to allow consumers to use aftermarket parts if they choose. But the flip side of that is that if that part is installed incorrectly, or if the part's defective and breaks and damages the car, then the automaker can say, hey, you know, we're not on the hook for that warranty work. Um, in addition, regardless of where the part comes from, if you don't maintain your car, if you don't get the oils changed regularly, get the tires rotated, that can void your warranty. So. Um, it's okay to get other parts, but you got to make sure that they're put in properly and that they're not defective. Something else we've had people ask us to ask ex experts, will a part shortage impact prices? It certainly it could. It's less common for the shortage to affect the price of parts. It's a lot more common for a shortage of parts to affect the price of new and used cars. And what I mean by that is the fewer cars that you can produce new, uh, means that there's a shortage. And so the, as demand goes up and supply stays flat, prices for that will go up. And then as demand for a used car goes up, um, the prices for that could follow. Something we haven't covered, where do dealerships come into play with all of this, their livelihood? Do you anticipate that some could potentially go under as a result if the strike continues? I doubt that. Uh, a lot of dealerships make a lot of money from selling used cars. But what we saw in the early days of COVID, just about three years ago, was when sales dropped off the face of the earth, a lot of dealerships just put some of their salespeople on furlough. Um, they used fewer salespeople because they were selling fewer cars. I would think that that would be their first step here is if they run out of models to sell, they would simply cut back on salespeople. But there's a pretty healthy uh, amount of uh, cars currently on lots for new inventory um, and used cars remain popular. So, I, I, you know, we have to see how long this goes. Um, and honestly, the longer it goes, the more dire it is. But uh, dealerships closing down seems unlikely at this point. So you think right now consumers do still have some power in terms of getting the vehicle they want, being able to negotiate. I look back often, I think I bought my SUV back in 2017, 0% APR for five years. I knocked a ton down off the sticker price. Uh, yeah. We're seeing less of that, but you're saying it's not gone altogether. It's not gone altogether, but you raise a great point. Interest rates now are a lot higher than they were in 2017 or even in 2020 or 2021. That's kept a lot of consumers on the sidelines hoping that those interest rates are gonna fall. So for people who can wait, I think waiting is a great option. Unfortunately, there's many car shoppers who are triggered by they're having another kid, their car broke down, they need it for work. Those people can't wait. Unfortunately, they're gonna be right in the crosshairs facing both uh, fewer cars, higher prices, and higher interest rates. Patrick Olson, editor-in-chief of Carfax. Thanks for answering all of our questions. We appreciate it.